Hello everyone, my name is Michael Clark and I would like to give you a walkthrough of my 21st century learning environment uh, that I created on something called Google SketchUp Make, which is a 3D modeling software program uh, to make sure that I can explain the theory behind the design choices that I made uh, to satisfy choice number two of the assessment for Capella. And before we get started, I just want to tell you a little bit about um, what it is we're going to be looking at today. Uh, we're going to be looking at a 2D floor plan, which just is an overview right here, of the learning center that I've created and had an idea of creating after going through the research that um, was provided by my instructor um, and taking into consideration um, how things like natural light, uh, noise, temperature, um, affect learning um, of students. And even uh, got to listen to some neuroscientists talk about how the social emotional connection of how the brain reacts to different situations uh, can be uh, changing the actual brain structure and function based on environmental factors. And that was from neuroscientist Richard Davison uh, in his lecture that he gave. And when we talk about uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, down here at the bottom, we have basic, and it goes up from there, psychological self-fulfillment. And I thought about this when I was creating the actual uh, spaces itself. Um, for example, when I have uh, some uh, study rooms, um, how they are uh, going to have different lighting and um, different nooks and crannies that people can go into to get that uh, actual feeling of warmth and secureness. Um, that way they can get uh, up the pyramid uh, when they're um, experimenting with different types of learning uh, that's going to be happening at this facility. And uh, when we get up here, I want to make sure that uh, the students are very proud of what they're doing. And uh, the ideas that I have for that was uh, having uh, like a theater and a uh, auditorium where they can actually tell a bigger audience all about their ideas and get uh, some life skills um, practice, uh, which will help them in the long run. Uh, so let's take a look at what I did. So we've got different scenes that will walk us through it. So right here at the beginning, just introduction to who I am and what this is. And then we're going to go straight into like the main school entrance right about here. We, let's go this way. There we go. Um, so we have uh, the roadway uh, with like a little a water feature right here. We got a parking lot. We got the solar garden where we got solar panels that are going to help power all this facility. Uh, we got bike racks so you can ride your bike to school. Uh, and then we got the main school entrance right here. And let's go on to scene number two. Uh, we're going to go over here to the right. We have like an outdoor patio over here, another outdoor patio over here. And this is actually going to be our business incubator slash storefront. So if students have um, real world uh, problems that they're trying to solve or ideas of entrepreneurship and they're actually trying to uh, sell some sort of uh, product or idea that they or concept that they come up with they will actually have a legitimate place for them to actually uh, do some startup initiatives and promote their ideas in the real world so if they have an idea to sell a product or an invention or something they could actually make make um, like a prototype uh, and see what sells and then they can redesign it uh, in some of the other sections that we have later on and we have a cafeteria because again we want to be making sure that our students are well fed and we have a farm to table concept so in the back here we are going to show you where we have some livestock and agriculture um, places that the students will actually maintain and solve real world problems um, by creating uh, like autonomous driving uh, farming machine or equipment. Um, again, all these are brain-based ideas and design-based uh, learning. 
where you want to have real world challenges for students to make real world connections to the concepts being taught. Uh, so here we have our actual recycling center slash manufacturing. We have our uh, fruit, food processing center where you can actually take the actual uh, fruits and vegetables and animals that are on the land and put it into our uh, farm to table cafeteria. And we have a hydroponic garden where students can uh, have experiments to see how uh, different plants grow in doors and how to make them grow faster. We have some land out here for agriculture purposes. Some more multi-purpose use over here. We actually have like a sea lab. So instead of just learning about um, different uh, marine life from books or textbooks, they can actually come up and have their own uh, experiences out in the wild and have uh, any experiments that they come up with. Um, they have a place to figure out. Uh, and perform those experiments right here and they have some docks so if they have some boats or uh, little kayaks or whatever they need to go do samples or whatever then they have access to that again in the prompt it said that money and resources were no objects so that's why we're coming up with uh, this uh, design uh, we've got some recreation fields because again it, brain science is that um, active bodies make active minds and uh, keep that neuroplasticity up when you got your blood flowing and pumping uh, with different activities uh, and we even have our own launch pad so if they have like uh, any space enthusiasts and they can actually design their own rockets or any sort of like flying devices like drones or whatever um, the new te newest technology is at the time and they can actually design it over here in this space and then they go and test it out here uh, which is pretty fantastic I think uh, we have some testing pools over here and swimming pools so we've got regular swimming pools where students can do laps and then we also have these testing pools over here so we have some underwater like ROVs like remotely operated vehicles or any um, testing that they want to do for uh, any problem or challenge that they are facing and they want to try and solve that then they can go and test it out over here and then back to the main center of this campus we have the fabrication lab which is pretty much um, a, just a brain think tank where you can actually go and just create you can have as many people in here as you want you can move the tables around uh, you can have uh, 3d printers set up cnc machines laser cutting machines uh, whatever you need uh, can be in this main room you can get this as dirty as you want and it just sw uh, sweeps right up so uh, that's one pretty awesome feature of the fabrication lab uh, we have some open space classroom um areas for us in the main areas where it's just like an open seating areas and you can just bring your laptop ipads whatever you want and you can collaborate with anyone that's walking around or you can just meet up whenever you need to uh, we have the virtual reality lab where these are like little pods that you would go in and just immerse yourself into whatever uh, latest tech uh, is out there to give you like that simulation experience um, and you can even t even test new software initiatives that you have like if you're for example you're like creating like a new uh, invention or software for like the military usage or aeronautical where you have to like make a simulator or software for a simulator or uh, VR goggles or whatever it is that they're into that they can go and test that out on the virtual reality lab over here uh, we have some more um, traditional conference rooms uh, like the article from Edutoka says that uh, noise, temperature, and seating arrangement um, definitely contribute to student learning. So if you are not wanting to have that possibly loud open spaces, they can go into the more quiet and uh, controlled conference room. Uh, we have the inside outside area too so there were, this would be covered but yet out open to the outside just to get that fresh air and natural light as much as possible getting to stimulate uh, the brain cells uh, over here we have the auditorium so again praise and reinforcement from their peers very important to uh, making sure that we're getting up that hierarchy of needs and 
so that they can build up those performance skills and um, job skills of presenting ideas to an audience uh, so they can use that later on. And then we have some of these reflection rooms because reflection is super important uh, throughout any process, the design process, learning process, any process really. Uh, and these are more secluded and isolated where these are like the uh, curved couches that are just facing that way and that way. Uh, and they're uh, more of a, like an isolation, just thinking area um, if they want to get away from a large group of people and just focus on something specific. And then out here we have the tech bank slash cafe. Uh, this is like a bank of all kinds of stuff. We've got iPads, VR headsets, we've got any sort of food or drink that you can imagine. And it's all free. You just check it out or um, you have credits or some sort of system so that the basic needs are always fulfilled and you're not worried about, oh, I have a cool idea, but I don't have the tech right now to support it. Or I'm kind of hungry, but I need to go get something and go off campus. It's all right here. Uh, and again, this cafe is fed from the farm to table cafe and the food processing center on site from that um, actually natural grown um, livestock and uh, fruits and vegetables, etc. So that's a little bit of, of the main idea, the grand tour of uh, my 21st century skill uh, school. And again, the facilities are all inspired by uh, brain science and what is most productive to the learner. Um, giving students the ability to see and actually um, develop different projects and ideas based on the different types of areas that are here um, gives them a better buy-in to actually what they want to do and what would motivate them instead of just saying, hey, learn this chapter out of the textbook. They're like, hey, go over here uh, and test your idea and launch it and see what happens. And uh, can actually live out your engineering design process instead of just reading about it. Um, different resources that we'd have, uh, we'd have direct um, connections to different companies and having a business incubator and storefront right here, uh, you would actually have a lot of buy-in from the community because they would actually have people that can come in um, and you can go and meet in your meeting rooms. Uh, with people from the community and tell them about what's going on in your storefront, um, all the different tech and everything that uh, is being developed. And the flexible seating is definitely key because all the, the tables can move, all the couches can move, all the chairs can move around. Uh, nothing is like um, permanent. You can just play, move it wherever you want. And again, we've got different environments um, for different types of learning and different types of process that is happening. At the time, uh, the the staff um, ideally uh, would be highly paid, highly skilled people from um, the actual fields that are actually on site. So, if you have like, agriculture in the back, uh, we want people that are actually have experience in that field. If you have um, testing uh, new products like for space or flight, then you want to have people from those fields. So we want to make sure that they are well funded and well supported um, and that they're not having to worry about their basic needs and they're uh, highly paid uh, and compensated for the time and effort that they're putting in to making sure that these uh, students are having real world experiences and making real world connections and developing skills that would be beneficial to them uh, for the rest of their life. Um, this could pretty much be any um, age range. Uh, for my example, though, I probably focus more on like a middle school, high school, or high school, college level, um, just depending on the kind of funding and the kind of uh, staff that we would have there. Um, but again, you could do a K through 12 school here quite easily, uh, for the way that it's set up and they have such real world and intentional, uh, learning experiences set up here. Uh, so thanks for taking a look around my idea of, uh, what I envision as a 21st century school and how it should look.